George Albion. I'd just like to spend some time to tell you a bit about my uh, two-door Range Rover that I've just finished restoring and I've just got it on the road. Um, it's not really my daily driver but um, I use it as much as I can. Um, I saw this advertised on Gumtree back in uh, 2015. Uh, I've been looking for one for oh, about six months. Um, there have been pretty junky ones around that I'd seen but this one had one particular line in the advertisement that caught my eye and that was the fact that it had very little rust so I went up to Northern Tasmania and had a look at it <coughs> an old bloke had owned it it had a lot of trouble keeping water out of the engine um, it had a few goes changed some head gaskets um, but still couldn't keep water out of the engine so he decided to sell it um, he said in the ad that the motor didn't go and when I went up and had a look at it we opened the bonnet and uh, he was right it didn't go, it had one head missing, uh, the inlet manifold was off and uh, two of the combustion chambers were full of water and it had been that way for probably 12 months so it was in a pretty sad state but the rest of the car was in good nick. Um, so I bought it, paid $800 and uh, paid a truck to bring it to the other end of Tassie and uh, so all up that cost 600 so all up it was a $1,400 uh, investment and I've spent about two and a half years getting it back on the road. Just show you what's underneath the bonnet. <laughs> it's the worst clip you've ever made. So this car's running the, uh, the three and a half litre Rover V8. Um, like I said, it had a lot of water damage to it to the point where uh, one of the liners was completely corroded. So um, I actually replaced the block. Um, I took the opportunity to put uh, SU carburetors on it, but uh, keeping the original air cleaners. Um, it's got a uh, an electronic um, pickup in the distributor, which replaces the points. Um, I've re fully rebuilt the engine, uh, had it rebored. Um, one of the spare engines that I had had. Uh, plus 20 pistons in it, so I was able to use those to save some money. Um, all in all, a very simple engine, easy to work on. Uh, doesn't get a lot of power out of it, its three and a half litres. Probably around about 100 kilowatts, um, so they're fairly slow. Um, I uh, replaced um, the radiator, put some thermo fans on it. Um, they're driven by a, uh, a temperature sensor which I've mounted on the block. Um, I can show you that. Can you see it in there? So that's a, um, 
that's a uh, easily available temperature controller available on the internet for for about 20 bucks it's fully programmable so you can uh, you can program uh, what uh, temperature your thermo fans come on and you can even um, connect a, uh, a piezoelectric um, uh, indicator to tell you when the engine's gone over temperature so that's wired in um, these little V8s don't like being overheated they tend to blow head gaskets um, so this engine I've got it set at uh, the thermo fans coming on at 86 degrees and uh, I've never had it go over 90 um, if you come around this way I'll show you the reason why the engine why the fella couldn't keep water out of the engine this is the inlet manifold it has um, carburetors mounted here one carburetor will feed two cylinders on one side and two on the other and if you look carefully on here in these ports you can see that these two are quite clean whereas these two have the normal carbon deposits inside and on the other side that's the opposite these two ones are clean and these ones have got carbon this indicates that the water jacket in this manifold was corroded through and uh, water is getting in to the cylinders two on one side and two on the other and the previous owner didn't tweak to this and kept changing head gaskets and so <laughs> never solved the problem so a new inlet manifold fixed kept fixed that problem and now there's no water in the uh, getting into the engine um, the other things I've done with the car is um, I've fully rebuilt the front end, um, new bushes all around. Um, the um, the front end was a bit interesting. The uh, swivel bearings, top and bottom, were very corroded and very rusted, um, so that was all replaced. Um, the uh, the only other difficulty I had was the um, vacuum actuator for the um, central diff lock that had broken um, and they're exceptionally expensive and hard to get but I was able to get one off a spare gearbox the worst part was lying underneath the car for two hours trying to change it over <laughs> um, I took it in to get uh, registered about six months ago and it passed with flying colors um, the first trip I did on it was the, uh, the Kuma 70th Land Rover anniversary which was held last year um, and the car drove faultlessly the whole time um, I've had it on a number of trips since and it's just been an absolute joy to drive um, I wanted to keep the original air cleaners on this engine but also to swap the, the Stromberg carburetors for HIF SUs these carburetors here to keep the original air cleaners I needed to make up an adapter plate to go from the SU flange to the air cleaner flange so these adapter plates here, one on this side and one on this side, I've just made out of 10mm aluminium plate, which I then uh, drilled and tapped and bored so that uh, I could attach the original air cleaners. One of the um, devices I did install um, to aid in the churning of the uh, SUs was an air, air fuel ratio meter. Um, Tuning the dual carburetors is um, can be a, a bit of a pain, um, particularly getting the um, the mixture even between the two carburetors. Um, this device uh, uses a fairly standard um, oxygen sensor mounted in the in the exhaust. Um, this car's got extractors on either side, so I've got a bung mounted in either both extractors, so that I can measure the air fuel ratio and make sure that it's balanced between the two um, carburetors. I'll just show you how that works, just give you a demo how that works. So there's the heater, heating up the uh, oxygen sensor and fairly soon once that's hot it'll just dis display the air fuel ratio that uh, is running in the engine at the moment. And it's a simple matter of adjusting the carburetor so that both banks are running the same air fuel ratio under the same conditions. So as you can see there, it's idling.
cycling at the moment at around about 11, 11 and a half. So I found that to be a very useful tool. You can, some people do leave it permanently connected. I'll probably, I'll disconnect this and put it away in the shelf in the workshop until I need it next time. Um, one of the other things I did uh, upgrade on the engine was um, I installed a, um, a high lift camshaft which I obtained from England. Um, these uh, engines are renowned for uh, cam wear lobe wear. Um, some of the engines that we've pulled apart here, some of the cam lobes have nearly disappeared altogether. Um, so it was an opportunity to um, get a brand new camshaft and one that gave a little bit more power. The one that I selected is a is a fairly moderate one and it, it delivers about an extra 22 horsepower. Um, so um, yeah, the, the engines I've been very pleased with how it's been running. It doesn't have a huge amount of power but um, it delivers miles per mile which is the main thing. Um, one of the first problems that were, I noticed uh, when I got it back on the road was the fact that it had a distinct lean to the driver's side in the suspension. It was about 30 millimetres. Um, I, uh, in my investigations to fix this, I swapped out all the suspension components in the front end, the rear. That includes springs, panhard rod, bushes, um, radius arms, trailing arms in the back, <laughs> rear springs, shock absorbers all around, nothing seemed to be able to fix this lean. Um, I took it to a local um, uh, Land Rover expert, Mr Justin Cooper, and, uh, and he suggested that I put uh, spring spaces in on the driver's side, which I did, and now the vehicle sits perfectly level on the road. One of the other problems I had just recently was um, I noticed that the car was um, drifting when I was cornering, cornering. it was um, oversteering quite a lot. So uh, I got home and um, moved the steering wheel just like this while I was looking at what the, uh, the wheels were doing. Well, the wheels were doing nothing but the whole body of the car was moving sideways, <laughs> which is a very odd thing to see. Um, uh, I quickly diagnosed uh, some um, completely shagged uh, panhard rod bushes which I've replaced with uh, with new bushes and now the vehicle handles very well. For a car that's uh, built in 1982 it gives a very comfortable ride. It corners well it, although without uh, anti-sway bars it does tend to have a fair amount of body roll but one soon gets quite used to that. Um, to drive uh, it's drives like a like a classic and it feels like a classic and uh, I enjoy driving it on the road <laughs>